My name is Dr. Mohamed Kazi, and I am an oral and maxillofacial surgeon. And we're going to show you today how to do a head and neck exam and an oral exam. So usually the, the first thing I start these exams with is I like to inspect the patient from the, from the outside um, externally. I look at the external skin. I make sure that there's no lesions uh, uh, on the face or neck. Um, no, no evidence of pigmented lesions uh, or no lesions that are suspicious for um, you know, uh, skin cancers, whether they're basal cells or uh, squamous cells or anything of that nature. Once you've completed the visual inspection, then you move on to the, uh, the uh, palpation portion of the exam. I usually start with the neck exam first. Um, so I start down below along the central aspect of the neck and I feel for the uh, thyroid gland here. Once I've done that, and I, you feel for any lumps or bumps there, then you kind of move up the sternocleidomastoid muscle or the SCM muscle, and you're feeling for the jugular uh, lymph nodes here, the jugular lymph, uh, chain lymph nodes, and you kind of palpate for anything that's firm, hard, and not mobile. So something that's firm, hard, or not mobile, uh, perhaps tender, those should really, really uh, be uh, uh, red flags. And then you move on to the submandibular area. That's kind of where your submandibular glands are going to be and the submental area. And you can have lymph nodes in these, these areas as well. The other area you feel for is right in front of the ears here. Uh, this is the preauricular area and that's where your parotid glands sit. So if any lumps uh, or bumps are in this area, you want to kind of feel those as well. Then once you've completed that, then you go ahead and move into the lips and intraoral exam. And you start uh, by looking at the lips. Uh, you wanna look at the lips and make sure that the vermilion border is, um, you have a, a clear margin. There's no blunting, there's no actinochelitis or white lesions of the vermilion, often seen in uh, patients that stay in the sun for a long time. And then you move on to the oral cavity exam. Go ahead and open your mouth and you kind of take a look here. Uh, it doesn't matter what order you go in, as long as you have a systematic way of doing this. Usually I'll start with the buccal mucosa here. I'll look at the buccal vestibule, and I will look also at the mandibular gingiva, and you can see that here. And then I move on to the labial mucosa and the um, gingiva here as well. You can do some bimanual palpation of the lip here, and you, you do have some minor salivary glands that sometimes you, you're able to feel here. Um, uh, they feel like rice grains. And then you move on to the buccal mucosa on the other side of the mouth, the contralateral side, uh, you look at the gingiva there. I'm looking along the uh, buccal mucosa. I identify Stenson's duct, um, so you can see that little prominence there is Stenson's duct. You can actually milk the salivary gland externally and get some salivary flow. If the salivary flow is normal, uh, that's kind of what you're looking for. You look at the gingiva superiorly, and then you look at the, again, the vestibules are examined. Uh, you can have leukoplakia along the marginal edge of the gingiva, or sometimes you can have corrugated leukoplakias along the gingiva, and that can be a sign of proliferative verrucous leukoplakia. You have the patient stick out their tongue, and you grab the tongue with a piece of gauze, and then you examine uh, from side to side. Uh, you can see here, that the lateral border of the tongue appears clear. And this is a very high risk site for uh, oral uh, cancers. So you wanna pay close attention to this. And then you take a look at this side as well here. Again, it looks uh, nice and clear, no leukoplakias, and it feels pretty nice and soft as well. These white lesions you wanna observe, they may not be quite this large always, um, uh, but any area, even if it was this kind of faint uh, that still warrants a biopsy if it doesn't go away in a uh, couple of weeks. Uh, you can see the other aspect of the, the lateral other side of the tongue here. So this is just a comparison to show the lateral, uh, a, a normal side compared to uh, something that's abnormal. And this is a little bit more obvious. Uh, so this is our uh, live example. Thank you. Then you have them raise their tongue and you wanna look at the floor of the mouth. Um, so you can see the floor of the mouth here is clear and has no leukoplakias. You do bimanual palpation, so you're feeling for the sublingual glands, but also the submandibular glands. And then by bimanual palpation, you're actually feeling through the inside of the mouth, but also through the outside of the mouth uh, between your two uh, fingers. 
And then you have the patient say, ah, and this can be sometimes difficult to visualize, but uh, you can see she has a clear oropharynx there. One, give me one more big ah. Uh, ah. Uh, and you can see we have a good look. The uvula was uh, uh, in the center, and she had no asymmetry to the tonsillar uh, region. The last part that you look at, um, again, you want to examine all the lingual gingiva, uh, but if you look here, um, you can see the soft palate is intact. Uh, there's no bumps or submucosal uh, uh, lesions, uh, so we don't see any enlargement in this area. And the same thing is true for the hard palate. You want to examine the gingiva on the internal aspect of all the teeth, whether it is on the lower or the uh, upper gingiva. Uh, you want to e e examine that. Um, and that essentially concludes your exam, and this is a, uh, a normal exam. Thank you. You're welcome.